Hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Golden Blooded is a college football YouTube channel for entertainment. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And let's get into our next college football video. Don't forget to send gear to represent your team. The address is P.O. Box 360, Liberty South Carolina 29657. Yes, we are still doing that. Just wanted to put that reminder in there because I haven't reminded anybody here recently. You know, I did a video yesterday that really, really made me raise my eyebrows. I did a video basically ranking the teams ever since West Virginia and TCU entered the Big 12 as far as wins and losses go overall record maybe in the future I can break it down even more and just do conference record but I did overall record and it does not look good for West Virginia we are in seventh place as far as wins and losses since 2012 the first season West Virginia was in the Big 12 that's not good at all I thought we'd be maybe middle of the pack maybe four or five or six but seven I did not see that happening. I didn't think West Virginia was that bad. But yes, we have been that bad in the Big 12. And no, I don't think it was a good hire to bring in Dana Holgerson. I think Dana Holgerson was the coach that actually set West Virginia back to where they are now. And Neil Brown just hasn't been the answer. So to recap the rankings from the video that I did yesterday, dead last was number 10, Kansas. And I put 24 and 58, but somehow I missed a bunch of losses. It's actually 24 and 106. Yes, it's even worse than what I thought. So Kansas was in 10th place with 24 and 106 as far as their wins and losses. Zero double digit win season, zero Big 12 championships. Number nine was Iowa State. They were 60 and 77, zero double digit win seasons, and zero Big 12 championships. Number eight was actually Texas Tech, 66 and 70, zero double digit win seasons, and zero Big 12 championships. So the bottom three have losing records since 2012. West Virginia at number seven was the first team with a winning record, 73 and 63, only one double digit win season, zero Big 12 championships. Number six surprised me, that was Texas, 78 and 60, one double digit win season, zero Big 12 championships. Number five was Kansas State with 86 and 54, two double digit win seasons, and two Big 12 championships. Baylor was number four, they also had a record of 86 and 54, but the tiebreaker was they had five double digit win seasons and three Big 12 championships. Number three, TCU. That surprised the heck out of me. 87 and 52, four double-digit win seasons and one Big 12 championship. Number two was actually Oklahoma State. Five double-digit win seasons. They were 97 and 45, zero Big 12 championships. And, of course, number one was Oklahoma. Far and away the best team in the Big 12 since 2012. 113 and 31, eight double-digit win seasons and seven Big 12 championships. But I wanted to focus on West Virginia and being at that number seven spot. Yes, we have a winning record, but being number seven in the Big 12 since we joined the Big 12, that's not good. One of the things people don't realize in the Big 12 is the scheduling is actually very difficult. Usually this is a very deep conference with very few bad teams. Last year, West Virginia was actually one of those bad teams, and they still went on the road and beat Oklahoma State and beat Baylor at home. So you can even lose to bad teams. Kansas had an up year. They finished 6-6. Six and six. They got to a bowl. So teams losing to Kansas, even though it's rare, last year it actually happened. West Virginia was one of the teams that lost to Kansas early in the year. That was a sign of things to come. West Virginia finished 5-7 and seven and didn't get to a bowl. So this year's schedule looked like this. We went on the road to Pitt, then Kansas at home, then FCS Townsend at home, then at Virginia Tech, then at Texas, then a bye week, then Baylor at home, then at Texas Tech, then TCU, at Iowa State, Oklahoma, Kansas State, and at Oklahoma State. So we actually had six true road tests. Two of them were out of conference, but honestly, this was the easy year in the Big 12 because we only had four road games in the Big 12, but those two road games in the out of conference schedule kind of offset that. This year, we actually have five true road games. This is our tough year because we have more road games, so current scheduling in the Big 12 is actually pretty tough. TCU was a good team. Kansas State was a good team. Even though Oklahoma was down, they were still good-ish, I could say, even though West Virginia got their first win ever in the Big 12 against Oklahoma. Texas was a good team. Baylor was a decent team. Texas Tech was a decent team. Really, the only two bad teams in the conference was West Virginia and Iowa State. Going forward, though, the new Big 12, once Texas and Oklahoma leaves, this could actually be very, very favorable for West Virginia even if the Big 12 decides to not add any teams from the ACC. And I think even if they add teams from the Pac-12, 
that's not going to make things all that much more difficult except for Utah. If the Big 12 adds Utah, then yes, that does add one more really tough game for West Virginia in the Big 12, whether it's a home game against Utah or an away game against Utah. Although we did see the first game of the year last year, a road trip to Florida for Utah, and they lost. And Florida was not a good team last year. So maybe home field advantage will help West Virginia if the Big 12 does bring in Utah. And you're not guaranteed to play Utah every year. That's one thing that I like about the new Big 12. You're not going to have to play every team every year like you have to do this year. And I know a lot of fans actually do like the round robin, but it guarantees you have to play every member in the Big 12. Going forward, it's not going to be that way. Some years, yes, you're going to have a tough schedule. You're going to draw more tough teams. But other years, you're actually going to have a softer schedule because you're going to draw the other teams. And you never know who's going to be good and who's going to be bad. So I think our schedules are actually going to be softer in the future. Some of them could be tougher. But we have that hope that our schedule can be softer in the future. I mean, you look at the ACC, you're not guaranteed to play the toughest teams in a year-in and year-out basis, even if you're in the Atlantic. Maybe you're not going to play the toughest team from the Coastal, or even the second toughest team from the Coastal. Maybe you play the bottom of the barrel teams from the Coastal. I think that could be the same situation in the Big 12, even if we don't go to divisions. You're not guaranteed to have to play the toughest teams year in and year out like you are right now. So I saw a tweet from the voice of Motown as far as a potential schedule for next year. This is not guaranteed, of course. The Big 12 will release their 2023 schedules for conference play, so we'll see how that looks. But it kind of shows just what I'm talking about, the point that I'm trying to make. Now, for out of conference, we do have to go on the road and play Penn State, but we get Pitt at home. So that is one more extra road game as far as going on the road to Penn State. The year after that, we actually get Penn State at home. But as far as in-conference schedule, this is what it could potentially look like for West Virginia. A road trip to Kansas State, yes, that's tough. Then you get Cincinnati home, then at TCU. So, yes, two tough road games. But then after that, Iowa State at home, at Baylor, Houston at home, BYU at home, at UCF, and Texas. That is a much easier conference schedule than what you had to face on a year-in and year-out basis playing the round-robin schedule that you have now. Does Kansas State take a big step backwards from this year's Big 12 championship team? Very, very possible. What about TCU? I don't think TCU is going to be anywhere as good as what they are this year, but they'll still probably be good, and I expect Baylor to be good and UCF to be good somewhat. But I think it sets up to be an easier schedule. Now, I'm not sure if the Big 12 is going to stick with the nine-conference game schedule or if they're going to go to eight-conference games in the future like all these other conferences do or most of these other conferences do. But if they go to an eight-game conference schedule, then that can make it even easier because you do control who you want to schedule in the out-of-conference. So you could make it easier if you wanted to. Now, we saw in recent years West Virginia doesn't do that. I mean, this year we had road trips to Pitt and Virginia Tech. We didn't know Virginia Tech was going to be a bad team, so we tried to schedule tough, and then this year we have at Penn State and then Pitt at home. So we actually do try to schedule decent when it comes to out of conference. I just think it's interesting going forward. West Virginia could have much more success as it relates to the Big 12, especially when Oklahoma and Texas leave the Big 12. Oklahoma has been far and away the best team in the Big 12. Not having to play them on a year-in and year-out basis, that's going to help as far as having an easier schedule. And then it looks like Texas is on the rise right now, so they're going to be a tough team and we won't have to play them in the near future as well. So I think West Virginia could actually have much more success in the new Big 12 because of the Big 12 conference scheduling not guaranteed to have to play the toughest teams year in and year out. So y'all let me know in the comments section. Do you think this actually sets up well for West Virginia in the future in the new Big 12? Or do you think it's actually not a good thing and maybe these future teams actually turn out to be tougher than what we realize? So our schedule actually gets tougher. That's all I got for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.